In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate the Premiere Pro to speed grade and back to Premiere Pro workflow. Now, in the latest release of Premiere Pro, that workflow has not changed, but there are a couple things that I want to point out that are new. First of all, the speed grade interface has changed. And second of all, the speed grade color grading engine, which is called the Lumetri engine, now runs inside Premiere Pro. Whether you own speed grade or not, the Lumetri engine is now running inside Premiere Pro, which means there are a couple of new features inside Premiere Pro that are related to speed grade. I want to show you those features briefly now. I cover them in more detail in a separate lesson. Let's just go down to effects here. Go over here to video effects. Go to color correction. Let me scroll down a bit here. There's a new effect here called Lumetri. I'll select this clip here. And I'll apply that effect to it by double clicking on it. When you do that, it opens up this dialog box saying select a look or a lookup table. I'll double click on this one here, for example. And it applies that look, and the Lumetri engine is now displaying that look, and there it is inside that clip. I'll click on the clip and go to Effect Controls, and there is the Lumetri effect. Basically, just turn it on or off. Right now it's on, now it's off. That's the Lumetri effect. It takes looks, lookup tables. They don't have to be made inside SpeedGrade, but SpeedGrade will play them. So you get a lookup table from any source, and it'll run inside Premiere Pro. I'll delete that. Let me show you one other thing here. Scroll down to the bottom here. There are now Lumetri presets called Lumetri looks. These are built in, you don't have to track them down. I'll go down here a little bit. A bunch of different ones, I'll click on cinematic. You can preview them over here like this. Scrolling down here to this particular one, let's say. I'll apply that to this clip by double clicking on it. It puts this look on this clip and there it is again. There's the after, there's the before. So these guys are now being driven by the Lumetri color grading engine here inside Premiere Pro, which is a pretty nice thing. Let me get rid of that. And now I wanna talk about the main workflow and that is from a sequence here inside Premiere Pro to speed grade and then back again to Premiere Pro. The workflow is not a straight line kind of a thing. You export a project from Premiere Pro in one of two ways. You open it up inside SpeedGrade and work on it there, but you can't bring it back directly into Premiere Pro. You need to export it from SpeedGrade as a video file and then bring that video file back into Premiere Pro. And since color grading is generally the last step in a workflow, when you bring it back into Premiere Pro, you're just gonna add things like supers on it or put maybe a cross dissolve at the beginning or the end or something like that. But nevertheless, when you bring it back into Premiere Pro, it will come back as a video file, not as, let's say, a Premiere Pro project file. So as I mentioned, there are two different ways to have a project go from Premiere Pro into SpeedGrade. I'll go to File. You can either send to Adobe SpeedGrade. That creates DPX files. I'll explain that in a moment. They're very large files, so you don't want to use this if you have a large project. The other way is to go Export and make an Edit Decision List. That's a very simple process. just makes a very small file. So I'm going to select that first. Click on EDL asks you a couple of questions. It says, what kind of audio do you have? I'm going to turn off audio for track two because there is no track two here. So I'll say none for that one. And then it says the name here, which is fine. That's the name of our sequence. Click OK. It says, where do you want to save this? I'm going to go to the desktop and save it there. So I'm going to save this time-lapse clips EDL file. Click Save, and it'll be done. It's that fast. Let's open this up inside SpeedGrade. I'll minimize Premiere Pro here. I'll double-click on SpeedGrade. Opens up very quickly. There's this empty timeline there. Now you need to find the EDL and bring it into this timeline. So here we are on the desktop, and there's the EDL. All I do is click the plus sign, and that adds this EDL to the timeline. And what you have here are clips that have no video on them. You need to connect the video. So what you need to do now is find the video these guys are connected to, and then make the connection by loading them from the desktop. And the desktop here is not the computer desktop. The desktop is this area up here. This is called the desktop inside SpeedGrade. So I would go over here and navigate to the folder where those guys are located and click on this thing to load them up on the desktop. And then you'd see the video clips here. And then you'd see them also here in the monitor when you're done. That's the process to bring in an EDL. And now if you want to bring in the finished grading work back in the Premiere Pro, you would export this project as a video file and then bring it back. I'm going to close this down now by closing that. Yes, and close down speed grade. I'll go back to Premiere Pro now. The other way to connect from Premiere Pro to SpeedGrade is to take the sequence and send it to Adobe SpeedGrade like this. And that creates a SpeedGrade project file, the IRCP project file. It also creates a folder full of DPX files. DPX is a type of video format that creates separate image files for each frame of your video. I've got an 8 second sequence here, so 8 times 30 is 240 frames. And each DPX HD frame is about 8 megabytes. This is almost two gigabytes for an eight second project. So just be aware of this thing. You create very large projects this way. And also playback is really tough if you have a slow hard drive. 
because it's playing these monstrous files and it's pretty tough to push them through your hard drive. So be aware if you're going to use this approach, this send to speed grid approach, you need to have a pretty beefy hard drive and a lot of room on it. So let me just do this though. I'm going to go save like this and it's going to create all those DPX files. It'll take a few seconds to do that. We're doing 240 files here or so. All right, let's take a look at that. On the desktop, we now have this folder and there is that speed grade project file. I'll open up the folder. Inside the folder, there are separate folders for each clip. Open up this top one there. Since this clip is about two seconds long, there should be about 60 DPX files, and there are 61. And you can see each one's about eight megabytes. So pretty substantial file sizes when you do DPX. I'll close that down. Let's open up SpeedGrade now. And we'll import that project over here. Import that project by just opening up. And that puts these guys here on the timeline. I'll switch to the monitor view here by pressing D, and there's the project with an audio file associated with it. You'll do your grading here again. When you're done, you can't just send this back to Premiere Pro because you've now taken the original video file and converted it into something else. So what you need to do now is export this as a video file. And if you want to work on it again back inside Premiere Pro, then you bring in that video file and work on it in a sequence there inside Premiere Pro. So that is the Premiere Pro to SpeedGrade and back to Premiere Pro workflow.